Welcome back to Peace, Love and Tarot. This reading is for Aries, Sun, Moon and Rising. And Aries, this is your weekly intuitive tarot reading for March 23rd to the 29th. This week we have the Soul Family Oracle card. We have the Four of Swords, the Page of Wands, the Death Energy, Nine of Cups, the Star and the Page of Swords. So I've got some interesting um, energies here, Aries. We have some kind of completion or ending that's taken place. And then we have that beautiful rebirth under the star energy, you know, healing, taking time out, coming back to yourself. But it's not going to be long before those winds of change are upon you and it's full speed ahead to this wish fulfillment. And, you know, Aries has had a lot of um, positive energies in, in, in the readings lately and a lot of cups energy, a lot of indicating that you are moving closer towards a sense of emotional fulfillment or joy, love and harmony. But I feel like you've been really peeling that onion and you've been really stripping back the layers and there has been um, an amount of purges or releases that have needed to happen for you to draw that energy to yourself or to magnetize the events and opportunities and, and people and things to you that um, are going to bring you that that level of contentment that we're seeing here. Um, also, you know, the Oracle card is saying to you that you are supported this week. You don't have to do it alone and that, you know, your soul tribe um, will present themselves to you. So I'm just going to start by reading out that card before we go with the tarot. Just going to find the page. Page 80. Okay. It's time to call in your soul family and support team. People who get you at soul level. People who are the same kind of weird as you. People who are your chosen family. They are coming and they are looking for you. If you haven't found them yet, this is a sign that they are close by. But in order for them to find you and recognize you when they do, it's important that you stop dimming your light and truly let yourself be seen. If you've already found them, then you're being called to let them support you and perhaps also assemble a wider team. Your support team can consist of all types of people, such as a therapist, coach, mentor, or healer. Tune into what kind of support you need now. So some of you might need um, some, some help with the healing process that we see here this week. Uh, maybe to take a little bit of extra self-care. Self but I do feel that, you know, this kind of dimming your light has come about in the situation that we see ending here. We have that death energy, and I didn't inquire to the tarot what this ending was about. And well, yes, I got the ending card, I got the Ten of Wands, and I got the Hermit card here. So definite um, strong ending energy with the Ten of Wands and the Death card combined. Um, we'll, we'll come to the Hermit in a moment. But, you know, obviously what is ending is something that has really weighed you down for a while. Something that might have kept you small. Uh, maybe a you know a load that you carried it could have been through you know keeping some information to yourself or a, a secret or a skeleton in your closet. The ten of wands can also talk about being overburdened with responsibility, be it in the household or um, you know potentially also in the workplace as well. I mean we've got the the hermit energy here as well, which is a sense of needing to um, take some time alone or that you might be moving into a period of solitude in your life. So some of you might be leaving a situation where you were partnered, be it a business partnership or a relationship or something like that. When the death energy comes in, it says that it's time to release, time to release that thing that was keeping you small or that was dimming your, your light or you know your connection with your higher self. And I always say when I see the death energy that nothing is more certain in life than the cycle of death and rebirth. And in order to get to the new opportunities, the new cycle, you know, often something needs to close. You know, that's what the death card does as an energy. It provides the, um, you know, the kind of foundation for you to clear that slate and rise like the phoenix, you know, out of those ashes. The death energy can be strong. Um, you know, it is a also a, a time of alchemical transformation. You know, death card is the card of transformation. So some of you might be going through some kind of personal transition as well in your life. And that may be why you need to release this or, or end something in order to fully bloom into that transition. You know, death has the the, the flag here with the uh, symbol of alchemy, spiritual alchemy here. This is about evolving and growing. And, you know, sometimes to do that, we have to embrace and surrender to death of the old, whether that's a way of being or a pattern we've set up in our lives or something physical like, you know, living in a certain place or being partnered with a certain person, that kind of thing. 
The promise with the death energy is that, you know, there is always a new dawn, a new day on the horizon, but first we need to, you know, release something. And when that sun rises, you know, it will illuminate the path forward out of this ending. Now, that's kind of a little bit like the hermit as well. Because the hermit is, you know, a period of time where you might need to retreat within to access your own internal wisdom. Um, this is also the card, it can be a card of spiritual awakening and with that transformation energy of death, some of you might be going through some kind of level of awakening or personal transition. Um, but the hermit year can be a time to go within and try and, um, you know, gain that hindsight perspective or join the dots. And just like that sun on the horizon in the death card, the Hermit has a link to the star energy, which we also have in the reading, um, which is about, you know, taking the time to to heal, to, to seek, to reconnect with your higher self. And the more you do that, the more you seek for the answers within rather than externally from you, that's when that star energy starts to flicker brighter and brighter. And maybe right now or in the recent past, this is recent past energy, you may have not really been able to see a path forward after this ending. But the more you seek, the more you understand that knowledge is power, the brighter that healing star energy shines in your own internal lantern. And then it starts to illuminate the path forward. So some of you might be a little bit in the space in between at the moment, but we see that path opening up here um, the more you go through that process so that's really beautiful and you know it won't be long before that star energy really gains full illumination because we have the star in the in the um in the reading here so the star energy is the card in the major arcana that follows on from the tower so it really is that calm after the storm obviously death is quite a strong energy as well so some of you may have been through quite a chaotic ending, could have been a town moment for some of you, where some kind of construct uh, is coming down that, you know, did play a part in your sense of stability within yourself. But the star is now about the rebirth. It's about you, this is you, you know, rising from those ashes as the phoenix, maybe feeling naked and vulnerable, but knowing that, you know, this is the first step on that new journey for you. Um, the star also obviously, um, you know, really encourages you to take that healing moment that you need to rebalance your energy, your emotions, all of these kinds of things. And I should really be reading that with the Four of Swords here because the Four of Swords is also about taking that momentary pause this week to heal the past taking that time out that you need to rest and recover after what could have been quite a tumultuous ending. We have the link to the Three of Swords here as well. Some of you might have some hurts, some grief, some sorrow, despair that has come out of that situation. So we really need to take the time that we need to, to heal and process those kinds of things. And you'll know when it's time to come back, like the hermit. The hermit retreats within, but he knows when it's time to come back into the world which I think will be you know towards the end of the week and this person here has this one sword lying here as a reminder that he'll know when he's reached the tipping point when he's tapped, he's recalibrated enough to pick up that sword and get back into life this is a pause for you to establish a new battle plan for your life so the star energy also you know talks about um making a wish on the star and being guided on your new path with this energy. So as I mentioned before, this process is going to really illuminate the way forward for you out of, um, you know, out of the, the kind of healing period or the sort of the darker period that we see you coming out of. The star can also indicate that it's a time to, you know, get some energy healing, um, to really come back into your body. These little stars here, seven of them are said to indicate the chakras within the body. But whatever you're feeling now, you know, whether you are feeling quite vulnerable, quite stripped bare, just know that this is the first step on the process to change, to transformation. I mean, we've got the Page of Swords here. I just feel that this is the indicator of that change or that first start of progress that happens out of that healing. Um, yeah, I really think this is, you know, I know this is a court card and it can be a person. There could be a younger ear sign so um, that would be Aquarius Libra or Gemini that somehow 
um, helps you shift your energy. But I really just feel that this is the indicator that through this healing journey, you'll get to a point where there's winds of change. Um, you know, that, that wind changes and you are now ready to start your new journey. This is about the, the indications of progress for you. Could be a communication as well. Like I said, a message coming in from a younger air sign or somebody who has air sign qualities um, that somehow kind of starts you off on this new journey that we see expanding here. We also have another page here, the Page of Wands. Um, and I asked for a second card for this from the Tarot and I got the Nine of Pentacles. So the Page of Wands for me is, you know, after kind of being in that um, hermit mode where you sort of are in the space in between, the Page of Wands is starting to come back out into the world and explore and discover again. Yes, he's still a little bit in the desert, but he's found new growth and new opportunities with this Ace of Wands here he's holding. It's about coming back into your energy and rediscovering your sense of passion and enthusiasm for life. You know, it could be a passionate communication too, maybe even from a fire sign, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. But I really feel this is about you now starting to uh, manifest a new beginning, to see a new beginning that you can really uh, imagine growing and sprouting. Some of you might get and offer an opportunity that you're quite passionate about that aligns with your purpose. You know, it could be in love, but I am feeling potentially this might be more in the business realm because we have the Nine of Pentacles here. And the thing about the Nine of Pentacles is it really is about you shining so brightly. You know, we heard in that Oracle card about, you know, dimming your light. And, you know, I really feel that this is about you, you know, now shining your light brightly. This is about you being in a sense of independence and self-sufficiency and not really needing to anyone else or any codependency in order to um, achieve and to be successful. Whatever opportunities come in for you, you know, this is the uh, indicator that they could be greatly and materially abundant for you as well. Um, and I'm not saying this is all going to play out in a week. I really feel that, you know, the, the Nine of Cups we see here and the Nine of Pentacles is really about um, the long-term vision for what's going to come out of this new path that you are embarking on. The, you know, the Nine of Pentacles does have that little snail down in the bottom left corner, which is the indicator that it does take time to really achieve abundance in your life. But the Nine of Pentacles talks about, you know, quality and luxury and, you know, having everything you need on a material financial scale. And then we have the beautiful Nine of Cups here, which is the same level of success and achievement, but on a level of joy, love and harmony, about feeling completely satisfied and content with where you are in your life. So this is where you're heading, Aries. But we've seen there's been a bit of a journey to get here. There's been things to release. There's been people to leave behind. There's been situations to end, and it hasn't been easy, but you are on the right track. All of your readings um, actually this year have strongly said to me you're on the right track and you are getting closer to this reality if you keep doing the work, if you keep doing the work of release. Um, you know, that Nine of Cups, this person here is uh, really, you know, taking that proud moment to display the cups and, and show them off, but he's not getting too comfortable. He's just on a, a wooden bench here because he knows there's still another cup to get. There's still a Ten of Cups reality. But this is about you heading in the right direction, understanding in the next few weeks or the months that follow that, you know, you need to celebrate your successes because they are expanding and you are moving towards potentially living your best life here with all the, you know, levels of abundance on a material sense you need, but also feeling deeply fulfilled and satisfied after a period of time, Aries, I mean, I'm an Aries myself, it's not just about my situation, but I know a lot of Aries um, readings have said the same thing that, that the last decade for you guys was a really big decade of, of karmic lessons and, and karmic burning. And now you are really moving into a period where you're going to reap the rewards, where you're going to achieve that kind of wish fulfillment that you're looking for. Because the Nine of Cups is the card of wish fulfillment. The star indicates it is a time now to set those intentions and to manifest and to dream big because you're manifesting quickly at the moment. So keep your thoughts and energies really aligned and um, you know this says to me that it really has the ability to come into your physical reality quite quickly okay Aries I'm going to leave it there um, I hope you enjoyed the reading 
do keep in mind it's a general reading so it won't be for every one of you guys feel free to leave me a comment because I always love to know how it's playing out and um, you know who and how it's resonating and um, I'll, I'll see you back here next week for another reading